There seems to be a really big contradiction in the Bible. On the one hand, in the Old Testament, it says you should take an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. And on the other hand, Jesus is saying, turn the other cheek. So which is it? Where we find eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth is in Exodus 21. So right after Exodus 20, where we have the Ten Commandments, the summation of the moral law in the Old Testament, you know, Moses comes down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments and he gives them to Israel, says things like you shouldn't murder, shouldn't steal, commit adultery, things like that. Then, after that, since the Ten Commandments are a summation of all of the laws, then we actually have all of the remaining laws for Israel. And there's a lot of them. There are 613 laws in the Old Testament. There are ceremonial laws, which have to do with the setting up of the tabernacle and the um, sacrifices and things like that. There's the civil laws, which tell you what to do in civil society, you know, breaking the law and going to jail, things like that would be examples of civil law nowadays. Similar thing back then. And then there's the moral law. So the Ten Commandments summarize the moral law. So committing adultery, that's a physical act. But there's also a spiritual part of that too. Um, that's where the morality comes from. So in Exodus 21, we have personal injury laws. There's several other different things in this chapter, but the majority of it is uh, personal injury laws. Whoever strikes his father or mother must surely be put to death. Whoever kidnaps another man must be put to death, whether he sells him or the man is found in his possession. And anyone who cures his, sorry, anyone who curses his father or mother must surely be put to death. So these are personal injury laws. You do harm to somebody, you get put to death. Well, not those ones are the ones where you get put to death, but not all of them are that way. So in verse 22, it says, if men who are fighting strike a pregnant woman and her child is born prematurely, but there's no further injury, he shall be surely fined as the woman's husband demands and as the court allows. So as the court allows and as the husband demands, those are legalities or the legal part of this. So this isn't, this isn't necessarily a moral law, it's dealing with the courts. But if a serious injury results, then you must require a life for a life. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for hand, foot for a foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, and stripe for stripe. So anything that's done to someone as a result of these men fighting, or sorry, whatever is done to this pregnant woman specifically as a result of these men fighting shall be done to the offender via the courts of the law. And then in Matthew 5, this is the Sermon on the Mount that everybody knows about. This is where Jesus is talking about this and he says, you have heard that it was said eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you not to resist an evil person. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away the one who wants to borrow from you. So as with the Old Testament section, this New Testament section, it'll help to read the context surrounding this verse. So Jesus is giving moral law to the people around him, but he's comparing the civil laws of the past to the moral laws that he's giving now. I'll give you some examples. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. He directly references one of the Ten Commandments, but this act of do not commit adultery, that's definitely part of the civil law, of course, with a moral law attached to it. And there he says, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And there's the moral aspect. The next one, whoever divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. So if you're divorcing someone, you give them a certificate of divorce. This is done through the courts. It's a civil law. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, brings adultery upon her. And he's referring to the moral aspect of adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery with her. So again, it's the moral aspect. And lastly, again, you have heard that it was said to the ancients, do not break your oath, but fulfill your vows to the Lord. The people in ancient Israel made oaths to the Lord and then they would go and fulfill them. But the point that Jesus is getting at here is that none of us can do those things by our own will. Of course, the Lord is what gives us the power to do those things. So we, should, we shouldn't be swearing by certain things. We just say yes or no. Simply let, let your yes be yes and your no, no. Anything more comes from the evil one. So Jesus, again, is getting at the moral aspect of this. And now we get to 
You have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. That's pointing to the legal, the civil law that we just read about. But I tell you not to resist an evil person. And then he goes and gives examples of that. But these aren't just actions that a person commits. He, he lists a few things here, but if it was an exhaustive list, we'd be going on forever and ever. He's giving these to illustrate the moral aspect of it. The point is not to retaliate or to blow something up into something bigger. If we go through each of these examples real quick, I'll show you how that could be blown up. If someone slaps you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. But a way to blow that up would be if someone were to slap you on your right cheek, you punch them. Or if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. The point here is that someone would uh, fight the suit or maybe do a counter suit or um, seek some other kind of retribution. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Of course, you could blow that up by refusing to or doing something else. But Jesus says, you know, don't just go the one mile, go two miles with that person. Jesus is simply giving a warning against vengeance, or rather an admonition against it. He's telling people, hey, if somebody wrongs you, it's not your job to go and seek vengeance against them. In fact, you should do something greater than what they ask because, well, I mean, for multiple reasons, you might win somebody's heart that way, you might make an impact on somebody else, you might have a positive influence on them. There's lots of great things that can come out of being overly generous to someone who didn't even expect it or who was trying to take something from you. The whole point of Jesus' ministry on earth is to show us that we can't fulfill the Old Testament laws in the first place. If we could fulfill them, we'd be able to reach God, but that's the whole point. We can't do this by our own power. That's why Jesus needed to come to earth in the first place. So he's giving us this new covenant. It doesn't conflict with the old one. It's not two different things that are set, up, uh, set against one another. Jesus has fulfilled one and he just gives us the other one. It's a free gift. I know this seems like a giant contradiction, but if you just look at the context, it really isn't that way. And I hope it's not something that will be a stumbling block for you in the future. I'll see you next time.